Hi, my name is William and in today's video I'm going to show you 25 plus tips that are going to be very handy when it comes to working with Excel. Let's dive into it. The first section that I'm going to cover in this video is about list management in Excel. Now, you get data coming in this structure and then sometimes some of the columns are not clearly visible and I see people trying to resize each of these columns and trying to estimate where does that column end and they try to stretch it uh, manually like that. Now tip number one in this would be you highlight the columns that are being affected and then you put your cursor between any two columns that are in your selection and then double click your mouse it will resize all the columns accordingly. The other thing is that you'll notice as I scroll down, I lose track of which column I am in. So it's important for us to be able to keep track of these uh, four rows so that they're always visible as you scroll down. So normally you select the row that is below the four rows that are going to be uh, always visible. So you select the next row in line. Then you go to view menu and choose to freeze pane. So you can see here you have freeze top row, freeze first column, freeze panes. The freeze top row is just about the first row at the header. And then freeze first column would normally be column number A. But when you want to be very specific, you choose freeze panes after you've selected the row that you want to, uh, uh, to maintain at top. So you click on freeze panes. So what you realize is that there is a thin uh, borderline just below the last row that will be sticky. So if I scroll down now, you will see I maintain the first four rows every time and I can tell which column uh, or row it is. The next tip I want to cover here is about these grid lines that you see on your Excel worksheet. So what you're meant to do to remove these grid lines, I do it all the time, is to go to view menu and then you'll see these grid lines which that check mark, you uncheck and then you'll notice it has no grid lines in these areas that have no borders. The ones that you see with borders here are borders that I have put uh, myself on this data set. So I normally remove the grid lines and then I can put my borders in the areas that I want to focus on. That way I keep my worksheets neat uh, if you ask me. Next, when it comes to sorting your data, you can always right click a certain column that you want to use to sort your data and choose the sort options. You can see there are several options here. If you have colors, you can choose to sort by color and so forth. But the one I want us to focus on today is the one you use from data. Then you choose this icon here that says sort. Then it will highlight the region of your data if you're happy with that. And always check whether the first row in your selection has been checked as uh, headers in your data. Then here you can sort your data by different columns. Say for instance you want to see the performance per region and then you choose by sales rep and then by channel. Then here you can choose I want to sort by let's start with the region then sales values maybe Z to A. Then you can choose to add a level here and then choose another one like sales rep. Maybe that one should be A to Z. And then the third one could be by channel, sorry, not quantity, by channel, and then maybe Z to A. So you can see here you have that uh, data sorted first by region, and then within the region you'll have the sales reps, and then within the sales reps, the channels are sorted accordingly, as you can see down here. So you start with Derek. And then go to Marcelo and then within Marcelo you have wholesalers, then supermarkets and so forth. Then you can always go back to data and then sort. And then you can alter the order of this sorting. Maybe you want to start with sales reps and see their performance below that. So you can use this arrow here to move the region down. So you can see now it's the second item and then say OK. So you'll see now it will start with sales rep. And then within sales reps, it will sort the regions and then go to 
uh, channels. Another simple tip is uh, one when you do a formula like for instance if I want to multiply the quantity and multiply by the unit price then you get that value but I find people trying to drag this down and they keep dragging and dragging and dragging until they get to the bottom of your data. Control Z to undo. Now the trick here is that you can have a lot of data, thousands of rows uh, of data. So ideally you should just do your formula. Then when you put your cursor on the bottom right of that formula or the cell with the formula, then you can double click, then send it down. Then it will give you the numbers all the way to the last cell as you can see here. Finally, on these uh, list management tricks and tips, uh, you can move these columns. Uh, ideally, you can cut uh, a column and then go and right click and insert cut cells there uh, just to reorder your columns. Alternatively, you could highlight that column, then put your cursor on the edge of that selection, hold your shift key and then drag until you see that uh, selector the green selector here in the location where you want to to put your column. So when I release you will see that reorganizes my data without having to cut and paste uh, the column. So we'll now move to uh, formatting uh, tips and the one I want to focus on here is what we call a format painter in Excel. You can see the arrangement of this data that we have here is that for each channel you have a subtotal down here and maybe you want to uh, format each of these subtotals in a certain way okay without having to do it for each row. Supposing you have multiple of these uh, subtotals. So what you can do is to do the formatting on the first one. For instance, I could do uh, bold that for particular row and then uh, go maybe change the color like that. I could add uh, maybe some border to that cell or that row. Maybe we choose that sort of a border and maybe let's put also a fill color color of that sort. So I can repeat that process for each of those subtotals but with Format Painter you just highlight once you do it for the first one then you go to Home then click on this Format Painter. Now the trick here is to double click this Format Painter because if you click once then it allows you to replicate it in one uh, more area but when you double click it allows you to select multiple areas. You can see the cursor has this uh, brush uh, icon against it. Now once you're done you need to remember to press escape and then it will have transferred the formatting of your data accordingly. The next tip that I want to cover is one that deals with data that comes with a lot of blanks and this could come because somebody did a pivot table and then they uh, copy pasted and sent to you or they could have extracted from their financial systems and then um, the data had blanks as you can see in this example. I've always asked people how would you address this challenge and they have always told me probably they would want to come here and drag and then keep dragging for each of these uh, blank cells like that because that's the intended result at the end of the day. But then assuming you have a thousand rows of this data then it will take you not less than 20 minutes to do that. So what I recommend is for you to highlight the columns that are being affected or the ones that have the blanks up to the last row with data. Then you can go to home menu and choose uh, find and select and choose go to special. So when you click go to special you get this dialog box and then you can choose blanks here so that you can target the cells that are blanks. So once you click blanks you can notice it highlights all the rows that are blanks. At this point don't make a mistake of clicking inside the worksheet because you lose the selection that you've already done with the blank cells. So you simply start typing then you 
type equals on your keyboard and then using your mouse or your arrows point to the cell that is immediately above the cell that has the equals then at this point so the trick is once you do that formula as you can see here then you just press control on your keyboard and press enter together then you'll see that does the trick to fill your data all through so that it is complete for further analysis and finally once you do that you just have to copy that area that had those formulas then right click again and choose paste special then you can paste special values so that's it for that trick in this section i would want to cover some of the basic formulas that you have to know when it comes to working in excel so given this data set, you have different segments and the numbers that are given per month. Maybe you want to see the totals for the entire year. That's what we have, the 2020 total. To do that, you highlight the data like that and then include where the total should appear. If you needed the totals to appear at the bottom as well, you highlight including this last row as such. And then you can go to Home menu on the home menu you choose to auto sum okay and as you can see i can also once i highlight i can press alt equals on the keyboard that's the shortcut for you to do a summation so these are the totals as you can see and then you have the totals here okay so when you want to add up numbers you don't say equals this plus this plus this you just have to choose equal sum as you can see here equal sum then you select your range continuously it will sum up those numbers the next thing you can do here is to do an average of these numbers from january to december but in our example here i want to focus on the last four months of the year so i'm going to highlight this region because that's why i want the averages to appear once i highlight i start typing my formula starting with the equals then i say average okay and at this point every formula that you're going to do once it is highlighted in that color blue you can always use your tab key okay to complete the formula once that formula has been highlighted in blue so the average we want the last four months that's september all the way to december those are the four months then i close the parenthesis at this point because i have a region highlighted i would want to press ctrl enter then it will give me the averages for each of these four months as you can see here now these green icons are just an indicator that uh, the formulas that i have used are not consistent because uh, this totals one highlighted all the 12 months this one has highlighted just the four months and that's why it's uh, being highlighted with that green icon there you can highlight click on this icon and choose to ignore error now when it comes to getting the highest from january to december for each of these segments then i can highlight again and i say equals max the formula that you use here is max once it's highlighted you press con you press tab then uh, choose from december to january like that close parenthesis hold your control as you enter so that it can be populated for the cells below now the next formula here is the opposite of high is low and therefore the opposite of max is mean again minimum from january to december okay then you can double click this formula to send it down that's the lowest value and that's the highest value now you're given some numbers here for the previous here so we want to compare 2019 with uh, 2020 numbers here so what's the percentage growth here so the percentage growth ideally you take the current value in this case is 2020 that's the most recent value then you divide with the previous value which is uh, 2019 in this case and say minus one that will give us the percentage growth or percentage change so once you highlight like this you'll see it gives you some numbers which are zero and it's just a matter of formatting this cell as a percentage from home like that 
okay so it tells you from 2019 to 2020 there was a 21 percent growth in the body lotions uh, segment is uh, how do you arrest these errors it's giving us an error here hash div zero error which is basically saying you're dividing this number by a zero and that's why it's giving us a zero now to do that there's a formula you can use here we call it uh, if error so i edit this formula and i introduce the formula if error the value is this uh, calculation here so that will not change then i put a comma at the end and indicate what should be displayed if it's an error in this case i can put a zero i could put open and close quotes to just display nothing uh, so when i enter and i send this formula down then you'll notice this cell no longer shows anything because it was evaluating to an error so let's move on to some other basic formulas that i feel are, are very important especially when it comes to data that has dates we all know most of our data sets have um, dates now when you have dates your reports are normally at year level or month level and so forth so in this exercise i'm going to show you how do you get uh, the year or the month or the day or the day of the week from a date these are common scenario that's why i'm covering it here so to get the year you say equals year that's the formula equals year then the serial number here is simply the date that you're targeting then you close the bracket so it will give you the year then send this formula down those are the years then the next thing is the month number again there's a formula called month equals month the serial number is the date where you're extracting the month from then you close the parenthesis so it tells you that's month number two then the last one i want to focus on is the month name the month name there's no formula called month name but the one we use in this case is called text the value in this case is the date again comma this has two parameters then in speak marks you type mmm three of them you could type four of them but because i'm targeting the name of the month as the first three characters as you can see here then i choose three m's now if i put four of them you see it gives me the months in full if i had used d instead of m then I'll get the day when that transaction was made, the name of the day. So let me revert back to M, because that's what we are focusing on. So these are some of the three critical formulas when it comes to working with dates in Excel or in Google Sheets uh, for that matter. So let's jump to the next tip here, which is about uh, having smart tables in Excel and the way you can convert your normal range of data to special tables. So starting with this uh, normal range of data, as you can see here, you can convert this to a special table in Excel. There are a number of ways to do that. Uh, the fastest way is to use a shortcut, Control T, then it will give you this dialog box and it's asking you to confirm that the selection you've done is the one you want to target and that the top row has headers. So that's the first way. The other way is to go to home menu and choose format as table. In this case, it gives you uh, the styles that you can work with. So let me choose one at random and you can see it gives you the same dialog box. So at this point, I want to confirm this uh, and say, okay, so you can see it gives me this table, okay? And because we've learned how we can remove grid lines, let me go to view and remove grid lines so that you see the table clearly. Then what you'll notice is that it comes with this extra menu here called table design. So as you can see, it comes with uh, a number of things. You can change the styles if you're not happy with the color you chose at first. You can choose a different style altogether. Like in this case, I can choose uh, this reddish one. Why not? 
then on the left side it gives you the name of the table maybe we could call these ones transactions you can rename it and then uh, it comes with the header row like that if it's uh, colored then the filter buttons are these filter handles so if i remove that they go away if i choose unbanded so you can see the colors are not emphasized in automating rows then if you want to go back to the normal range you choose to convert to range and it will ask you to confirm that so i'm not going to uh, revert back so let me cancel but why convert this to a special table uh, let's do a formula here that is going to give us uh, the amount we are given the quantity and the unit price you can see immediately i put my form i mean my label for the column it extends this table it was initially up to column h now it's up to column i so it's extended so that's one of the uh, good behavior of these tables you will understand more when it comes to pivot tables now let's do a formula that is going to multiply the quantity look at that so instead of giving me g2 once i select cell g2 it tells me i'm taking at quantity that's the name of the column okay then multiply unit price you can see it gives you the name of the columns right so once you enter you notice you don't have to autofill your formula to the rest of the cells it does that automatically for you and that's another advantage of these special tables in excel so you can see at the bottom right corner of that table it has a blue icon and that indicates the last cell of your data uh, so for instance if i go ahead and do the year and the month as we've done in the previous example equals year then i am choosing the date you can see it immediately picks that so it makes your life easier and faster so i'm taking the date again so you can see you have those columns adjusted so we have these three columns that are going to have um, let me just put them in purple those are calculated columns the next cool behavior about these uh, special tables in excel is that they are self-adjusting so as you can see these are calculated columns now if i want to have additional rows of data as data becomes available then i can copy for instance this data set as additional data Control c to copy then when i come to this uh, table here i select the cell immediately below the last row then i can say Control v and as you can see here the rest of the formulas that we had done for these three columns are auto populated so that's the next advantage of this particular special table the next tip that comes in handy when you're working with excel you want to limit what people can key in in your data so that you minimize the number of errors and data cleanup that you have to do so that has to do with data validation uh, so let's look at how can you validate this data so that uh, for instance so if you're tracking your training programs in a given year uh, maybe you want the division where this employee works which program it was the start date end date and so forth uh, so for instance i want them to be able to select a division to validate these division cells i highlight the cells then go to data menu then look for data validation somewhere uh, on your data menu this is where it is for me then i click data validation so it gives you this dialog box and you can see by default you can type any value in this cell but we want to limit this to be something that is coming from a list then the source of this list will be here so i click inside that uh, source box then i can highlight this as my list then i press ok you'll notice there's an icon that appears here so i can select this person is in human capital this one is in marketing so i don't have a leeway for me to come here and say this one is human resource you know when i do that and enter then you get this uh, prompt that you're trying to do 
uh, or to violate what has been uh, set. So you have to retry and choose a different uh, division altogether. So the same case with these uh, training programs. Uh, but now let's first convert these uh, programs table to a special table. We say the shortcut is control T and it gives you this dialog box and then this table is already formatted as a special table. You notice it comes with that extra menu called table design or just design. If I click outside that design menu disappears. Then when it comes to this uh, list of data validation, the training programs, I go to data, click on data validation, then allow values from a list. So for the source here, I'm going to highlight this region again, just like we did before. So you can see it gives me that range, okay. And you see I can select which program this uh, was for each of these person. And again, I cannot just type Excel here. If I type, then it gives me that error. So I have to restart. Now, the reason why we converted this to a special table is so that if I come down here and I say, maybe we have another program that we are calling Google Docs. So I just add it immediately after this uh, last row of taxation. And when I enter, you can see it self adjusts that table. Now that has an impact on your drop down so that if I come back here, then you'll notice the last item here is Google Doc. Okay, so that gives us a dynamic uh, drop down. Uh, so if I come back here and I say uh, maybe branding and grooming. So if I come back here, I have the choice for me to select. So that's the advantage of the special tables when it comes to validation. Okay. Now the start and end date, maybe we could validate this have to be, uh, so if I go back to data, data validation, this time around I can choose a date. And then here I can choose a date, maybe that should be greater than or equals to then 1st of January 2021. So if I try to type these as uh, uh, maybe 2nd of December 2020, so you see again it can't allow me to do that until I type maybe 4th of March 2021. So that allows. So you can validate numbers, text and so forth. All right. So that's data validation for you. So I hope you're finding these uh, tips very useful and you're going to apply them in your work, day-to-day -day work. So in the next tip, we are going to be looking at what we call the quick access toolbar. So I've taken a screenshot here of the different programs, uh, the Microsoft Word, PowerPoint and Excel. And as you can see, um, maybe if I focus on this Excel that I have, normally above the ribbon, you have three or so uh, default quick access default quick access uh, tools uh, and in most cases it's the save and do and redo but as you can see here i have more than that in my quick access toolbar up there and as you can see on these uh, word i have a number of them and you can see they are consistent whether it's for excel or for powerpoint or for word depending on what you're focusing on so how do you get the quick access toolbar there and why do you need it i have blogged about how you can increase your speed when it comes to excel and one of the items that i've covered in details is the quick access toolbar themes and so forth and shortcuts i'll put the link to the blog down in the description below so first of all, when it comes to quick access toolbar, if you right click, you have the option to show above or below. I prefer when it is below my ribbon. The ribbon is where the menus and the commands up here are. So I have the quick access toolbar. By default, it's normally above your ribbon. And you can see for me, I have many, many, many uh, quick access toolbars. And as you can see, I can double click any one of the menus for the ribbon to remain 
uh, minimized. I prefer working when the uh, ribbon is minimized because I have the quick access toolbar. But how did I get this quick access toolbar? To get the quick access toolbar, I go through each of the menus up here and I look at what are the commands that I frequently use and that's why they are called quick access toolbar. You want to access them as uh, swiftly as possible without having to navigate through the columns. Now if I am interested, maybe one of the things I do a lot is to wrap text. Then I can right click on that particular command and say add to quick access toolbar. If it is merge and center, I can right click and choose add to quick access toolbar. If you notice, if I do the same on the right, uh, on the format painter, that option is grayed out because I've already added it in my quick access toolbar here. So I've done that for each of these uh, buttons that I use commonly. So for consistency, I start with the home menu, then I go from left to right, uh, right clicking and adding to the quick access toolbar the common techniques the common tools that I use uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Then I go to insert menu. I do the same. I go to page layout. If there is anything that I want to focus on here, then I can right click and choose to add to quick access toolbar and so forth until I get to the last menu. Once I do that, I double click the menu and then it's always uh, minimized. Then you can use the quick access toolbar here and you can see it's very easy. I don't have to go to home menu, look for format painter, then go to home menu, look for conditional formatting. I can access it here and I do that for all my programs. I do it once. It will always be visible. So the next tip here is what we call the flash fill and flash fill is something that is only available with Excel 2013 and above. And uh, if you have 2010 and below, this is not going to be available. So in this case, I have the full name and I want to target the last names of these people. So that's the second name in these names. So I can opt to use uh, formulas to generate these second names. But when it comes to flash fill, what you do is uh, maybe I actually want these as capital letters. So I want to make caps lock on. Then I type new all. Then as I start typing the second name, something happens to my Excel. And as you can see, it's highlighted uh, in light gray color here, just suggesting to you what probably you are targeting to achieve. And as much as this could be a long list, uh, it will be able to detect. So you give it one or two uh, scenarios then it's able to detect. So if you're happy with what it is suggesting you just press enter then it will complete. That is what we call flash fill. Okay so the way you type the first two or three occurrences is the same thing that is going to be replicated. So if I delete this one and I choose maybe uh, new all and I choose maybe new all then as I tap man, you can see the rest of the names appear accordingly. Let's use the flash fill again here. Maybe what we are targeting here is to generate these uh, phone numbers that are in between our text. So I will type uh, uh, maybe 411. So you type the first two occurrences. This is 3481295. Okay, then uh, you can type, they don't have to follow each other, I can skip and maybe type here 734, sorry it has to be the same way you want it to appear, 3461, then 132. So once you do that, you can either press Ctrl E, that's the shortcut for flash fill, or go to data menu. And then this is where you find flash fill. So when I click, you'll see it's able to generate those phone numbers. So when you're dealing with data that is a text string, you're normally likely going to be combining or splitting the text. And that's what I'm going to focus on here. Maybe you're given these names and you want the full name as the last name followed with the first name. Then with a space in between, you can say equals, then you select 
the name first, then followed with an and sign or what we call a, an ampersand. Then in between we need a space, the second piece of text. So I open speech marks, press the space bar once, then press close the speech marks, then and again I choose the first name. So when I enter you can see it combines the last space, then it gives you the first and then you can send it down. Alternatively, you can use equals concatenate and as you can see, depending on which version you're using, there's the full name called concatenate or concat. This is the newer one. So you can use any one of them. They do the same thing, but for compatibility purposes, let me use concatenate. Then the first name is this one, comma. This time around, it's not an ampersand, it's a comma. We need a space and closed in quotation marks comma the third item is the first name and then i close so you achieve the same thing okay so this is some of the things that you can work with uh, to combine your text the last one you can use and this is only available with the newer versions of excel it's called a text join if this one you start by specifying what's the delimiter what will separate one piece of text from another it's a space i enclose it in double quotes then uh, if the selection you make has spaces do you want them to be ignored uh, like if c2 had nothing should it be combined with nothing or should it be treated as the, as though there was nothing so i'll say true yes ignore if they are blanks then you select text 1, text 2, and so forth. In this case, that's the list. Close the parenthesis, and you can see you achieve the same end goal. Let's move swiftly to the next uh, piece of tip, and this has to do with charts. Well, the one that I'm going to focus on is a column chart and a variance analysis chart that is going to be conditional formatted. Let's dive in. So we are going to be plotting the product lines and then the variances here. So I'll select the product line, hold control and select the variances like that. Then the shortcut to get the column chart is Alt F1. Alt F1 is the shortcut to get a chart. So let's format this chart so that any positive variance will be shown as green, but any bar that is pointing downward will be red. So we right click on this publish color and then choose format data series. Then once you get these formatting options on the far right, choose this first icon, go to fill, then choose solid fill initially. Then this is the trick. You choose or tick this option that says invert if negative. So it will open up these two color choice or pickers down here. So you choose the first one here, you want to show this as green if it's positive, but for the red one, it should be in red. For the negative ones, it should be red. So that's how you conditional format your charts. Then let's go ahead and right click again and choose to add data labels. Okay, so it gives us the data labels against each of these uh, bars. So let's tidy up this chart a little bit. Uh, so for instance, I want to highlight this uh, left axis, right click and format axis. I don't want to be displayed because I already can see the number against each of these bars. Then on the formatting options on the right here, I open up labels. Then instead of next to axis, I'll choose to show none. Alternatively, you could have deleted, no problem. Then I do the same... Uh, with this horizontal axis. So long as I have the formatting options open on the right side, I just click on that horizontal axis. Then I choose under labels to show. In this case, I don't want to say none. I want to show low so that they appear on the lower side. I could choose high again. So they will appear at the top there, but I prefer to show them low. That way they don't interfere with the numbers on my chart. The next thing is about uh, the data labels. As you can see, you have two uh, items that had a zero variance. Now you don't want to show that zero variance as a zero there. Maybe you want to just leave it out for one reason or the other. 
So you format those data labels, then go to this number options here, where there's this general code, you can put your code there. Uh, this is a different lesson altogether called custom number format, but I'll use the pound sign to just represent the number um, placeholder. I put a comma, then hash, hash, hash. That just says if the number is above a thousand, just put a comma separator. The hash or, uh, sign is just a placeholder. That's how the positive numbers will be formatted. Then I put a semicolon. And then I repeat the same hash, comma, hash, hash, hash. And that's how the negative ones will be formatted. If I want them to be with a parenthesis, then I can wrap them with parenthesis, just those uh, hash bounds, as you can see there. Then after that, it's how the zeros will be formatted. So I put a semicolon. I just say I don't want to display the zero, so I just leave it unspecified and I put the third semicolon of how text will be displayed. If I press add, so you'll notice the zeros that were here have disappeared. Yeah? Then let's continue editing so that the numbers will be red here. So I'll put uh, green for positive numbers. The color is normally put in uh, uh, square brackets. I put the square brackets here. I choose color 10. That's a different lesson altogether. That's the representative for green color. You could type green, but that's a, that's a bit shouty. Uh, the other one will be red. Again in square brackets. And I press red. I press add. You can see the numbers appear colored as you have set them. So if I remove these uh, grid lines, you'll see our chart is starting to appear nice. Then if I format these bars again, format data series, then the gap width I can reduce so that they are a bit close together. Maybe put them towards zero or just about 10%. Yeah, that way. So I hope that uh, gives you a head start when it comes to adding data labels to charts formatting the colors and you know the axis and so forth next in line uh, is what we call shortcuts in excel and i'm going to cover a number of the shortcuts that i use commonly now if i'm starting from cell d1 and i just want to highlight the top row then highlight downwards then i can start with selecting d1 then hold Control shift with the arrow pointing in the direction that I want to highlight, in this case to the right, then control shift arrow down, it will be able to highlight that particular selection. If I want to know what is the last cell with data in this worksheet, I will press control with the end key on your keyboard. And as you can see, it takes me to the last cell that was initially uh, having data as much as right now it doesn't have data maybe somebody edited the font size or had put some numbers so it will always tell you if you have a lot of blank cells then it will tell you what is the last cell that had data initially now if I go to the end and I want to go to the first cell in this worksheet I can press Control home then it will always take you to cell A1 so that's about navigation. Control shift with arrows will uh, highlight depending on which direction you want to move. Uh, the next one I want to do is uh, if I first remove the grid lines on this worksheet and I just want to add borders on this selection. So using the shortcuts, I can say control shift arrow to the right arrow down. Then I press control one. That's the shortcut of getting these formatting options. Then I can go to border, color, then maybe I choose a faint color like that. Then I choose outline and then inside like that. So you can see the shortcut for formatting is called control plus one. Now if I want to undo, I choose control Z, then the borders disappear. If I want to them back, I press control Y, then that comes back. Now down here i can sum up these numbers for the amount now i can go to home menu say 
auto sum but the shortcut here is alt equals and then it will sum up those numbers as you can see here if i want this printed i can say control p then it will print or give you a print preview as you can see here i don't want to do that the shortcut is what we are focusing on control p now if i want to do the filters like i mentioned earlier on the shortcut is control shift l then that introduces the filter buttons on your data if you want them to go back or uh, to go away you control shift l again and that's how i deal with uh, and that's how i do the filter so that i can then be able to pick a certain item now when it comes to formatting these numbers here maybe i want them to be as percentage or have the dollar sign i can say control shift with number four on top of your keyboard that adds the currency symbol to these numbers if these were computing percentages i say that divided by the grand total at the bottom here that needs effort lock that's the shortcut for locking then once i get these numbers i control shift with number five on top of my keyboard that will convert them to percentages that i can use the my quick access toolbar it's going to give me the decimal places those are some of the key shortcuts that i find very useful control one i use it all the time to format whether it's charts or it's anything within the cells here in excel talking about printing now if i go ahead and i say control p that's the shortcut to print then it gives me the preview of the data that will be printed and as you can see on this preview i have uh, the headers there then the columns country estimated population and so forth and then if i move to the next page you can see it comes with the data but it doesn't tell me what are the headers for each of these data set then i move to the next uh, page it comes with the headers the next page doesn't have the headers so let me come out of this and then do a number of uh, setup here now there are two ways for you to be able to repeat these headers on top of your data set in different pages now before we do the repeat headers down here you have these buttons the first one is the normal uh, view then you have the page layout and then the page break preview now if i choose a page break preview then that gives me an indication of the number of pages that we will end up having and as you can see the dotted blue lines are the page breaks and they can be adjusted accordingly so for instance i can stretch this uh, vertical dotted line blue line uh, so if I rest my cursor on top of it, see those uh, double-edged arrow there, I can stretch it all the way to the last or to where the dark blue one is and then it will make that one to be or to fit in one page. As you scroll down, you'll see it has one page right now, but I can select a place where I want the page break to appear if I go to page layout. I can do page break and I say insert page break at the selection there so you can see now that becomes page one this one becomes page two and so forth so you can adjust those dotted lines or insert the page breaks yourself once you do that the next thing is uh, to make sure that once you print this will come with uh, the header repeated for instance if i want row number five to appear repeated on my printout then i go to page layout i choose print titles on the print titles here and the sheet tab here rows to repeat at top i can highlight row number five in full as you can see there so if i say okay or i print preview here so you see page one has the headers there page two now has your headers as well so that's how you make them to be repeated now if you don't want to go through that process of print titles let me first remove this uh, row say okay you can alternatively highlight row number five then go to this name box here and type print underscore 
titles okay then you press enter but before I do that I can highlight maybe one all the way to row number five then I say print underscore titles press enter now if I press control P to print so you can see on page one I have these uh, headers then if I go to page two down here you can see the headers are maintained so that's how you would go about making sure the headers are always visible in every page that you have to print out this one is a small data set but you get the point one of the key actions that you find yourself doing in Excel is copy pasting your data from one range to another but as you copy paste normally you'd want to either not transfer the formatting not transfer the formulas and so forth so let's look at some of the shortcuts that you can use or the actions that you can perform when it comes to pasting your data so I'll start by copying this data here so if I select that data set like that and I press ctrl C to copy then I come to this worksheet called paste special maybe I want to put it here if I just press ctrl V then you'll notice it pastes the data but then because of the relative references and the locking we did in the initial formula then some of these become errors the same on the same note you notice this column is not completely visible as it were in this original data set here so you can copy paste and then uh, when you come to the final output it doesn't come with the formattings that you'd want it to be transferred so let me undo Control Z and let's go back and copy our data again. Highlight the range you want to copy. Control C to copy. Then under Paste Special, the shortcut for pasting special is Control Alt V. You press those three keys together. So I press Control Alt V together. So I'll always get this Paste Special dialog box now by default it pastes everything this time around i just want to paste values so i can press v or just choose v there then say okay so you can see it transfers the data but it doesn't transfer the formatting when you say paste special values so for instance the dates are shown as numbers then the amounts are not formatting with the dollars then the percentages we had computed are not in uh, showing in percentage these are just decimals so once you paste special values you can go ahead and control alt v again so that you get the same dialog box this time around you can choose formats or you can choose t uh, to select formats then it will come and transfer the formatting that was there in the initial uh, data you can go ahead press control alt v the third time and choose column widths and this is a nifty one because it will transfer the the column widths that were coming from your source data then you press ok and you can see the data is now appearing as it were in the initial data set the other thing you can do with paste special is for instance maybe you want to uh, divide these numbers by a thousand okay so i can uh, copy maybe let me first of all put the formatting using the format painter there then I'll type a thousand there okay so I'll copy that particular cell that has that a thousand that's what I want to divide with then once I highlight this range I control alt V to paste special then down here under operations I have the option to divide okay then I press ok you notice immediately those numbers are divided by a thousand okay now the last thing you can do with paste special here that I want to cover is uh, maybe when you have this list and you want to copy and then uh, control C to copy you can go to the location where you want to paste it then control alt V to paste special then you choose transpose what that does is that it transfers 
the data but then instead of being in a column it's transposed to being in a row next let's look at how do you deal with data that has repetitions how do you tell if you have duplicates in your data for instance if you look at this data set you'll notice i have the employee records and the salaries they get paid on a monthly basis how do we tell if a certain employee has been captured more than once now the quickest way is uh, to highlight the column b that's where the numbers are the employee numbers or you can use Control shift arrow down to highlight that then go to home menu conditional formatting highlight sales rules and choose duplicate values and you can see if i maintain the default colors anything that is colored with that default color has been repeated okay so you can see this one has been repeated down here and this one has been repeated elsewhere down there now if you wanted to confirm that the entire record has been repeated then you'd want to first of all maybe come up with a dummy column here and then say let's use the text join or you could use concatenate to do this uh, maybe the delimiter here we can choose uh, we can use a semicolon why not comma if i want to skip anything that is blank that's okay true comma then the text that i want to join is everything in this list and i close the bracket when i enter it just gives me a dummy set of column now if i go to home and i do conditional formatting based on this anything that is going to be colored is an actual repeated value okay as you can see here this has been colored now if i come back here and i say this uh maybe the value here is not 7500 it's 77500 so you notice that color disappears but here it's maintained because it's only checking the employee id but here it's checking the entire record in full now once you identify whether you have duplicates or not then you can go to data menu you choose remove duplicates then it will highlight the range for you the top row is a header these are the columns to be considered so it will check for duplication as an entire record if it is repeated four times then it will remove three records and maintain one so if i press ok so you can see only one duplicate was found uh, and that was removed and you can see uh, it's no longer colored here so these two are colored because like i mentioned it was based on just a single column and here now you see there's nothing colored because you've removed the duplicates one of the recent additions in uh, office 365 and uh, excel 20 th 2019 is for you to be able to use a formula called unique for instance if i want to generate a unique list of departments then i can go to a blank area in my data then i'll say equals unique then the array from which you're getting the unique values is this list of departments i control shift arrow down to highlight it then i just press enter you notice it comes with this uh, unique list and you see that blue border around it that tells you this is a formula that spills down and that's a different lesson altogether so you can see that's a quickest way to get the unique values from a column no repetitions here the last tip i want to cover here is how you can use pivot tables so you're given this data set you've already seen it before but we've been asked to show the trend of sales for the last 12 months slice per region then create a report of segment performance in each channel so we have the first case we are going to be using this first uh, last column here last 12 months then uh, show the performance for each period uh, 
the total amount. Now the quickest way is to use a pivot table. Make sure you're within this data set. Um, go to insert menu, choose pivot table. You can see by default it's able to detect your range. Uh, if it's not, you can highlight manually. And down here we want the report to appear on the same worksheet where we are in. So let me choose uh, that particular cell. That's where the report will appear. Press OK. So you see it gives me a place where the report will appear. Now when it comes to pivot tables on the right side here, by default these uh, will appear like this. Uh, but if you click on this gear icon, I can choose to show side by side. I prefer it like this. Now the first question we've been asked, what's the performance for the last 12 months? So I drag, what do you want to aggregate? It's the amount. So I drag it in the values. Then I want to see the year row-wise. So I put it in the rows. Then I want to see the month as well in the rows. So it will show me the year and the month as such and um, but remember we want to see the last 12 months so i have a column here that tells me whether this one is the last 12 months or not there is a formula there you can check it later and then i can put this one on the filters there then up here i can be able to choose uh, last 12 months of data so you can see it gives me the last 12 months uh, from Feb 2021 going backwards. Now the other thing you can do here when it comes to pivot tables is to go to design menu. Then change the layout. As you can see on this particular layout we have row labels indicated above 2020. I would want to see the name of that column. 2020 then the year as the year and the month are separate columns now to do that i go to report layout and i choose tabular as the outline you could choose outline form but i prefer the tabular one so that separates the different columns since instead of being indented it gives you as a separate column then i can go to subtotals and choose not to show any subtotals and then I can do the same with grand totals. I want to put them off for rows and columns because I just want to see the last 12 months of data as such. And I can go to analyze menu and I remove these uh, plus minus buttons. In design you can choose a different style altogether if you prefer that one. This dark shading here, the blue shading, it's a matter of row headers. I remove then that goes away then i can go to insert menu or go to analyze menu and on analyze menu i can choose pivot chart then i can choose maybe to show this as a line chart and that's it so that gives me the performance for the last 12 months you can right click on these grayish icons right click and choose to hide field buttons I don't need this legend, I just press delete on the keyboard. I can say this is last 12 months sales. As the title, I can add data labels if I prefer, but I will leave it as such. And then uh, if I want the numbers to be properly formatted, I right click on top of the numbers on my pivot table. Then I choose number format. Go to number, I want zero decimals, put a comma separator, I say OK. So you can see that changes the pivot as well as on the chart. OK, so that answers the first question we had of, uh, of showing the last 12 months sliced per region. We are yet to slice per region. Uh, so if I go to analyze menu, I can choose to insert slicer there. Then I choose region because that's what we are being asked to slice with. Then I press OK. It gives me this uh, slicer. Alternatively, if I delete that, I could go to the field list on my right here. Then right click the column that I want to use as a slicer. Then I choose to add as a slicer. Then that way, if I choose cost, the chart responds. As the numbers are changing, then the chart is able to to respond if I want to see two of them I highlight continuously and it is going to show me the performance for that 
So the next question we need to answer is to create a report of segment performance in each channel. Okay. So now instead of starting from scratch, I prefer to copy this pivot table. So I highlight. So this is another tip. You can always copy pivot tables. Then make sure you allow some room in between. So this is the second pivot table. I just make changes to what I want. I remove, drag out. Uh, now we're being asked to segment or to show the performance per segment. I don't want to filter for the last 12 months. So I remove that uh, filter so that it's everything selected. I can remove now the filter. Then uh, I'm being asked to show this uh, per channel. So I drag per channel there. So it's telling me the performance per channel. Okay. And you can see whatever is on top on the rows. It's the first thing that appears. If I interchange here, you can see now segment comes first and then you have the channels. But I prefer it the other way around. So that's a quick look at pivot tables. And I believe uh, this is one of the easiest feature to learn in Excel, but the most powerful. All right, that was a quick look at some of the key features and tricks that you can use to make your work faster in Excel. I hope you found this useful. Down in the comments below, let me know if you found anything useful or if I missed one of the tips that you use frequently. Mention it in the comments below and we shall be able to learn from you as well. Don't forget to share this out and if you want to see more of these videos and tutorials, press the subscribe button and the bell icon for you to be notified when I have a new video uh, covering Excel and Google Sheets and Power BI stuff. Hope to see you soon.